friends, it's Heather from my mini front porch. I'm hopping on today to show you how to draw a door for your dollhouse paper tag. Over here, and I'll show you. This red door is one that I printed for one of my dollhouses. And maybe you need a custom size, so that would be a reason to draw your own, or uh, maybe you can't find a a specific style that you want for your project and you want to draw it. So those are some good reasons to be able to draw them here on Tinkercad. So first of all, if you've ever looked at like the wood manufactured dollhouse stores, you'll notice that one side of them is rounded. And that makes it so that as it pivots, none of the corners get stuck on the door frame. So that's how we're going to draw ours. And you're going to do a couple things uh, before you get started, you want to decide what size you need your door to be. If you are cutting the hole yourself into a project that you're building yourself, you can make whatever size you like. Uh, I sometimes will go and look online for measurements and then convert them to 112 scale, or maybe you are building a dollhouse kit and there's already a hole for the door. In that case, you want to measure and you're gonna to wanna to build the door frame to those specifications. I'm gonna work backwards a little bit. I'm gonna build, I'm gonna show you how to build this door, but I'm gonna build the frame for it to start. So go ahead and hop onto Tinkercad and you can pause this as you go. Or maybe you watch it the whole way through and come back later, but you're gonna start with a cube. You're gonna to wanna to know how thick your walls are. The kit I'm working on right now is about nine millimeters. The walls are about nine millimeters thick. And I put some siding on the outside wall. So I'm going to make mine 10 millimeters thick. And then I want my door to fit inside here. So what I'm actually building to start is the hole that the door is going to fit into. So over here. Um, I need a little bit of space in between the top and the bottom because I want to put a door hang or a wreath hanger on the door to hang my um, wreaths and door hangers. So I'm gonna give myself about a millimeter and a half of additional space. So since the door here is 165 millimeters tall, I'm gonna go with 166.5. And I think I'll give myself about a millimeter of space on either side. Now, if you would happen to print your door and you feel like that's too much room, then you could print it again. You have to know your printer. Some of my printers will print objects and I'll have plenty of room and other times not so much. Okay, so there's the hole. Now we wanna build the frame around the hole. The thicker you make this, the more firm it will be. Of course, it depends on the material you're printing with. I print with PLA. I think I generally make my door frame about two millimeters thick, but it definitely has some flex in that case. But once it's installed into the opening of the dollhouse wall, I don't notice it anymore. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to add four millimeters to each of these measurements so that I have two millimeters the whole way around the edge. and let's make this solid and then let's select both objects and center pull inside of the frame and then I'm going to group them there we are door frame I'll show you if you select both of these each of them have a door that fits perfectly in there a little bit more space on either side, which is hard to see, but you can see it right there. Great fit. Okay. Now, how do we build this door? Let's begin with a cylinder. That's gonna be this rounded side. We're gonna turn the sides up as high as they will go so that it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna rotate it so that it's the same orientation as the frame. I like to work that way. Everything 
cohesive. And I'm going to make this door about five millimeters thick. I could make it as thick as the frame if you wanted it to be flush on both sides. Um, the door on my real house is closer to flush on the outside um, and inset on the inside. I'm going to make this half the thickness of the frame. Five. Five. Oh, that was the wrong one. Okay. And then I want the length. I'm going to make it match this door since we're copying it. And we're going to make it 165. I'm working in millimeters. I didn't mention that. Here. Okay. Now we need flat parts. I'm going to use the, the cube again and make a rectangle. It's going to be the same shape as the cylinder. And we're going to position it so that it's exactly in the center of the rounded part. So since this is 5, we need to make this 70, but 2.5 less. And we'll center it here. Typo. There we go. Now for the 165. Now I'm going to select both of these objects, center them, and I'm going to align them all the way to the right. And then I'm going to use the snap grid to move this over the 2.5. So two millimeters. I'm going to arrow key on my keyboard. Shoot. It's just 2.5. Now they are 50, 165. Or, sorry, that's the length, the height. The width should be 70, which it is. Now there are a couple of ways that you could connect this to the door. Um, some of my doors, I've put a little hole in the door and the frame and put a pin through there, like a straight pin that you can use for sewing or a sequin pin. And that works great. You can also make pins or I don't I want to call it a hinge. I guess it's not really a hinge, but you can make the thing that the door pivots on completely out of CLA. And this is how um, I would do that. I'm going to come over here and grab our half sphere. And since this is five millimeters, I'm going to make my little sphere about three by three. I'm going to make it a millimeter and a half high. We're going to put that right on the end. Cylinder. Let's rotate this so that it's standing on end. Let's bring it back up. Down. I mean, out from under the bottom of the ground. And I'm going to select this and the cylinder. And I'm going to align it perfectly centered. And then I'm going to have the cylinder come out to the end like this. And I'm going to use the snap grid to move it to 1.5. There is 0.5. Now it's perfectly on the end of our cylinder, and I'm going to group them. Oh, hold on. Before I group them, let me copy this one. Now let's group them. I'm going to drag this one to the other end. Okay, and I'm going to use this mirror feature to flip it around. Come up here. To look at what we're doing now. Let's put this on the end of it on this end. So select them both, do a line again. We're going to use the snap grid to move this 1.5 and select them both. Okay, I'm going to make a copy of it. Because I'm going to use the copy to put the divots in the frame that will receive these so that it can pivot. 
So now there's two of them, and I'm also going to select the slab over here. We're going to recenter it. It does look like it moved a little bit. So let's also move this to 2.5 again. Not centering. So, all right, now I'm going to group them. There is the whole slab of our door. And move this guy out of the way. We are going to center the door and the frame to one another. Okay. And now I'm going to ungroup the door. And the red. And hopefully, when I move these aside, one of those pink bars will still be there. Perfect. I'm going to group these. Okay. Now, let's ungroup this one. We want to try to leave the half spheres behind. I have to ungroup twice because we grouped the two spheres on separate occasions. Okay. And zoom in. My half sphere is still there. I'm going to make it a hole. And if you remember, I gave myself a millimeter and a half of extra space to work with. So I could actually move this 0.75. So it is inside the door. Okay. I'm gonna go. I suddenly wondered if this door was sitting perfectly on the ground. As long as it is, that hole's in the right spot. Good. Let's do the same thing to this path here. You push the F key, it will zoom you right in to where you're working, although it got me a little closer than I wanted to be. Make it a hole. I'm going to move it to 75. 75. And I'm going to group it. Remember I said that this frame will be a little bit flexible. So that'll make it really easy after you've printed it to pop these the door in here and as long as everything goes according to plan this little knob should fit right into this little hole and then it should pivot there and once your door is installed into the hole in your house this shouldn't be able to move too much anymore so the door should be in there fairly securely now we could call that a day and be done but we want to make the door decorative got to do a little bit more to it. So let me delete this. And this is pretty simple too. The way that I made these is just by using I'm going to make this cube two millimeters tall, but I'm going to bring it three millimeters off the ground since our door is five millimeters thick. And Let's stretch it out until I like how much of the width it's keeping up. And let's make it, say, 30 tall. Let's change our snap grid to something big. Five. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There, now they're 10 apart. Hopefully when I push this again, it should just do it again. Yep. Okay. I'm going to select each of the holes by pushing the shift key. I'm going to group them so that they stay with one another. And now I'm going to select them and the door and I'm going to center it. There. 
Okay, before I group it, let's make a copy so that we get one on the back of the door as well. And let's put that down at zero. Okay, so let's get this and this group. Let's see if our holes are on the back of the door like I thought they were. Fair enough, let's group them too. There we go. Now I'm printing on an Ender 3 with PLA. So when I print this, laying down on my print bed, um, this hole here is going to need a support so that it doesn't fall through to the ground when it prints. Um, but my slicer will just print like a little piece in here that I can pop right out. And then both sides of my door will have these little indentations. And then after I printed my trim or my frame, I should be able to pop it right in there. Center it just for, there we go. And it should swing on those little knobs that we designed into it. Okay. I think I'll do another installment, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I'll talk about how to put windows and glass in these doors. But thanks for watching today. And if you decide to make a door and print it and use it, I'm on Instagram. I would love to see it. If you want to tag me, it's at my mini front porch. Thanks, guys.